Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be giving a few tips for the alternative to practical paper that features in the IGCSE uh, specification. Specifically we're going to be looking at the question where you're asked to design an experiment. Now I've taken this from the 2019 alternative to practical paper. Uh, there are multiple versions of that paper, so this might not be the one you officially sat, but it's one of the versions that I have access to. And I've wanted to use this because it's a really great example of one of these kind of questions, because it's worth, as you can see at the bottom right corner, six marks. So let me just explain the setup on the screen. On the left hand side, I have part of the introduction that is provided to this large question. So this is question like one, but there's parts A, B, C, D, for example. And at the very beginning of the question, you're given this on the left. So it tells you about a an experiment involving yeast where they're looking at anaerobic respiration. There's two test tubes, one labelled warm, one labelled cool. What I'd recommend uh, I, to do before getting into this video, I'd probably hit pause now. Just read the left hand side of the screen so that you're familiar with what's about to come. OK, so on the right hand side... What we've got is a question that appears later in the paper and it says anaerobic respiration in yeast cells also produces ethanol. So we've changed what we're looking at here. This question now is about ethanol. And it says that high concentrations of ethanol can slow down the rate of respiration. Notice in this, on the left hand side at the beginning of the question, they're talking about an experiment related to the effect of, and I'll just highlight it there, the effect of temperature. So we've changed what we're talking about here, because now it says plan an investigation determine the effect of different concentrations of ethanol on the rate of respiration. So we are looking fundamentally at this, the effect of different concentrations, not temperature. So we've changed the variable. But it's asking you to plan an investigation, and as you can see at the bottom right, it's worth six marks. So I'm going to tell you where you get your marks from. And we're using this uh, particular experiment as an example. So what I'll do is give you some general pointers and then tell you specifically for this question how you'd go about answering it. So there are, or one thing I should say is that you get marks for suitable alternative methods. So if your method, if the one that you choose to uh, write about isn't quite the same one as in this video, provided it is a legit method and it gives you valid results, you will still get all the credit for it. So the first thing that you need to mention is an independent variable. So what I'm going to do is just make a few notes on the actual dotted lines on the right hand side like it would be in a real exam paper. Um, I'll just write down a few key things that you can apply to every single question type that looks like this. And then I'll tell you specifically what answers would relate to this. So independent variable is what you need and that will get you one of the six marks. So that's worth one mark. Now in this experiment, because we're looking at concentrations of ethanol, you need to have at least two different concentrations. I always say as a good rule of thumb, it's five, five uh, different kind of values that you're looking for for an independent variable. It's a pretty standard way of running an experiment. So testing, I don't know, if you're doing a temperature experiment, having maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60 degrees, five different values that you can test, for example. So you get a big range of results. But this only wants you to have at least two different concentrations of ethanol. But for the mark, you have to say that you are going, you have to state an independent variable. Equally, if you've got an independent variable, there must be a... Dependent variable. Now the dependent variable is the thing that you are measuring and this again is worth one of the six marks. Now in this experiment what we're measuring is the time taken for methylene blue to decolorize. What we're trying to do is ultimately we're changing, if you have a look where I've just drawn the arrow, we're now changing the independent variable from temperature, which was on the left of the screen, to concentrations of ethanol. But there's no need to change the entire experiment. So we're going to base the experiment that we're planning together now on the one that was previously uh, spoken about in the exam paper. So we've got different concentrations of ethanol that we're going to test as that independent variable. 
we're going to measure the time taken for methylene blue to decolorize, so very much like the experiment on the left, that's our dependent variable. Then what we need to do is consider the control variables. So let's make a note of that. So we need to look at our control variables. And this is usually worth two out of the six marks. Now sometimes you'll get given different categories. If you look at a mark scheme, sometimes it will say they want two variables from this list and two variables from this list, or one from list A, one from list B, for example. So usually there's quite a lot you can say in this control variable section. My advice would be list everything that you can think of. Just list them all, because if you, if you do that, you are likely to cover more. So what are the control variables? I might list a few in this uh, experiment here, just because actually a lot of these tend to apply to a lot of these kind of questions. A lot of the same type of experiments are come up in the alternative to practical paper. So ones we could include are things like the same, I'll just put temperature, temp, for temperature, because now we can keep this the same. Temperature was changed in the earlier experiment, the th so the experiment described on the left of the screen, but in this question the temperature now has to say the same. We need to have the same pH. How about volume of ethanol that we're going to use? And equally if we're going to have the same volume of ethanol then what we should have is the same volume of sugar. Because the yeast will need something to respire. It's talking about anaerobic respiration. Now let's think about anaerobic respiration for a moment. We're going to metabolise glucose but without oxygen. So for the, re for the yeast to survive at least we need a respiratory substrate. So we need to provide them with some sugar. We could talk about the same volume of yeast. That we're going to use as well. Or I'll just put... Meth B for methylene blue. Now I've got that same volume, but I could also change the word volume. I could substitute that out and use the word concentration because I'll need the same concentration of all of these things. So I'll need the same concentration of ethanol, same concentration of methylene blue, same concentration of yeast. Also, in the experiment on the left, if I just highlight it over here, you can see they use a layer of oil. So, in this experiment, we might want the same volume or depth of oil. So, that's another one. I won't necessarily add to the, that to the list, but just where it talks about oil here, that's another one that we can include in the control variable list. So, what we've got there is a whole heap of different control variables rele relevant to this particular experiment. And provided we give a good couple, we're bound to hit the two marks. So we've already got four out of a possible six. So there's two other areas we need to address. One of them is safety. Now safety is really important, but the safety that you refer to has to be relevant. So relevant safety things could be in gloves, it could be in goggles, it could be no flames. So I'm going to add this word here because I think this is really important. The safety that you refer to has to be relevant to the actual question that you're given. So you've got an independent variable, a dependent variable. We've got control variables and safety listed. So all we need now is something to do with this last point here. The methodology. So that's specific things related to the method for this experiment, so how we're going to carry it out. So I won't write them, but I'm going to say all of the things that you could say for this particular experiment. So maybe the idea of leaving the equipment to equilibrate at a set temperature. That's one mark. The idea of using a water bath or insulation to maintain one particular temperature. That would get you a mark. Maybe you could talk about or include details of a comparison or a control. So, for example, a test with no ethanol or no yeast present. Or maybe you could talk about having two or more repeats, or even three repeats, or more trials, if you like, so repeating the entire experiment. 
any of those kind of things were classed are classed as methodology. So I'll just say a couple again. So leaving the equipment to equilibrate at the set temperature, using a water bath or insulation to maintain the temperature, detailing a comparison or a control test or including repeats, all of those would get you one mark. It will get you the methodology mark. So if we include the independent variable, dependent variable, list as many control variables that are relevant as we can, relevant safety points, and give some aspects of the methodology, then we are going to hit all of our six points. And that's the quick way to ultimately answer one of these kinds of questions that you get in the alternative to practical paper. So you're asked specifically to plan or design an investigation or an experiment to look at how one variable basically affects another. Just for a final point, just one final thing I'd like to uh, say, and it's really, I think, one of the most crucial things I can actually add in this video. And it's something really relevant that a lot of my own students do. Just look at the exam question on the right-hand side again, and it says, plan an investigation to determine the effect of different concentrations of ethanol on the rate of respiration in yeast cells. Now, that is not the dependent variable. The dependent variable isn't the rate of respiration in yeast. That's like the grand scheme thing that you're ultimately trying to find out. The dependent variable is the thing that you are actually physically measuring in the experiment. And we're going to use that as a means to talk about the rate of respiration. So in this experiment, our dependent variable, if you remember, was the time taken for methylene blue to decolorize. We are going to use that as a guide to look at how the rate of respiration is progressing, if you like. So just be conscious of that. In this section here, I'll highlight in green, they're not giving you the independent and dependent variable. Yes, they're giving you the independent about different concentrations of ethanol, but that specifically isn't the dependent variable. The dependent variable, again, is what you actually measure in the experiment. If you've got any questions at all, just leave a comment in the video section, and I hope all of that helps.